Hello. Today, I'm going to be getting wet and getting my GoPro camera in the water. Finally. Adorama TV presents Capture the Action with Martin Dory. Hello, I'm Martin Dory, and you are watching Adorama TV. I'm in this really quite moist atmosphere of the pool today to put the Hero 3 Plus Black Edition GoPro camera through its paces. We're going to be talking about housing, we're going to be talking about condensation, and I'm also going to show you one trick that will make your footage as good as it can be. Martin Dory here. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest competition to win some amazing prizes. OK, let's start with the basics. Your camera isn't waterproof, but you knew that, didn't you? OK, and that means you need to keep it dry. And that means any drips, any splashes, or putting it in the pool is going to kill it. How do you keep it dry? Of course, with your standard housing. Here it is. Now, this thing is waterproof to 40 metres. There it is. Don't forget, before you seal it up, to run your finger around that seal there just to make sure it's perfect. Also, before you seal it up, we need to talk about condensation. Now, taking your camera in cold or humid environments or taking them from changes in environments, from a hot environment to a cold environment and vice versa, you can get fogging on the inside of your case and that will ruin your shots, as you can see here. Basically, the fogging occurs because moist air will get trapped inside the housing. After all, it is a sealed unit. And if you have a temperature change, well, that moist air will then condensate on the front of the housing, causing your fogging. One way of getting around this is to make sure that the camera and the housing are really dry before you put the camera in. So that would mean taking it out of a moist atmosphere like this, drying it off with a hairdryer maybe, putting it back in, sealing it up, and then bringing it back in here. Something else you can do is use one of these. This is an anti-fog insert, and what it'll do is it'll help to suck the moisture out of that air that's trapped inside your, your housing. You just slip it into the bottom of the housing there, close it up. You can use these up to four or five times. After each use, simply heat them up in the oven for a few minutes, then you can use them again. Right then, at last, let's get this thing in the water. Right, okay, now we're in the water. What's the first thing you're gonna notice about the camera? Well, I'll tell you. It's not going to float. And you could be saying sayonara to a very expensive piece of kit. Bye bye. So how are you gonna avoid losing your camera in the water? Well, one thing you can do is to use one of these, a floating handle. It really is as easy as it seems. Got a hand grip as well, so it's really handy for that. And if you lose it, it's gonna float and you are gonna be able to find it, we hope. Of course, I wouldn't recommend using it without the wrist handle, but it'll give you some great shots. There you go, that's fantastic. But what about if you're mounting your camera on a board, surfboard, wakeboard, anything like that? What happens then? Okay, we're gonna talk about mounting in a later episode, but there is something else that you can use to stop your camera from disappearing off if all your mounts were to fail. And it is this little thing here. It's a floating back door mount, very easy to use. Simply peel off the sticky, make sure your camera's dry. Stick it on the back door. Like so. And then watch your camera float. 
How about that? No more lost cameras. Okay, so we've got one final thing to talk about, and that's lens spots. This is really important. See these little droplets of water on the lens? They might not look like anything, but they will completely ruin your shots. More likely than not, they're gonna be over someone's face, ruining the whole thing. Why does this happen? It's down to water surface tension, which forms droplets. Now the way to get over this is to break the surface tension, so to create a really glass smooth finish on your camera by using a water repellent. You can buy them from car repair shops. Another technique, which is quite rough and ready, but very cheap, is to do this. Lick your lens and you will create a microfilm of spittle on it and that will hopefully keep your droplets away. There you go. Away we are. Okay, that's it for now. Don't forget to dry off your camera as much as you can before you take it out of the housing. We need it for next time. Thank you for joining me on Adorama TV today. For more great tips and tricks, don't forget to, to go to the Learning Center. Also, subscribe to Adorama TV for more videos. There's a link below, click to subscribe. And also, don't forget, please, to like, comment or share this video. And if there's anything you want to know, just get in touch with us. See you next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.